uh, Technician A says an analog scope. Incidentally, this is Engine Performance 2 Test 6, and we're talking about some scope stuff. Uh, Technician A says an analog scope can store the waveform for viewing later. Hmm. Technician B says the trigger level has to be set on most scopes to be able to view a changing waveform. As B, an analog scope cannot store the waveform for viewing later. Now, if you've got a digital camera, you can take a picture of one. You know, yeah, they're talking about the old uh, CRT scope, you know? Huh? There he is. Who is? That kid. Oh, is that kid? All right. Well, uh, maybe he'll come in here, but I'm not going to go out there looking for him. Okay, uh, an oscilloscope display. I probably should, though. Um, oh, get up and open that door. And we'll talk to this. Somebody's always locking their key in their car. I don't know what the deal is on that. Yeah. Yeah, where's he at? You see him? Yeah, Tell him to come here. It's Santa well, we usually well, usually when we get in one, you wind up with wind noise and cracked windows and that kind of thing. But uh, when we're through here in the class, I'll go over and see if I can crack the window or tear up your rubber or something to get in there. Is it okay? All right. Which, where, you, where are you at? Uh, I'm right outside in this Ford Ranger right here. I'm about to probably go to class for fabrication. What color is it? Red. Go to fabrication? What class is that? It's right over there, fabrication for uh, industrial electronics. Oh, oh, elect industrial electronics. Okay, so that's a, okay, so you're, uh, what color is it? Red Ford Ranger. Red Ford Ranger. Yep. It's right out here. We'll see what we can do about busting into there for you. All right, thank All you, right. sir. All right, then. Actually, if it's the right ear model, it won't be that hard to get into that one. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you my secret until you see me do it. Uh, an oscilloscope display is called a what? Oh, by the way, I said you could take a picture. You can take a picture of a waveform on an old CRT scope if you want to store that one. But uh, you know what the trigger level is? You know, on this trigger, on this uh, scope out here, when you see me checking crank sensors and stuff, have you ever noticed how when you hook up your scope and you guys have, most of you guys in here have used scopes, that the pattern tends to walk back and, you know, it tends to roll, go scrolling by? Uh, if you're actually looking at a definitive um, blip on the scope, like an injector or a qualifier or something like that, and, it, and it's trying to walk by, the trigger uh, will actually be the, when you set the trigger, you can set it on the screen so that every time that thing goes to the certain level, you know, that your trigger is, that's where that one will always stay. So you're basically freezing the pattern it's still a live pattern, but it's stopping it in the screen where you see it. Something else you can do with your trigger is this. let's say that you say you've got a, uh, a uh, input to the engine controller or an output from it that's changing, uh, that's going into the dropping out, let's say. Let's say your throttle position sensor, you're assuming that it's dropping out and causing something to buck and jerk, kind of like what y'all are going to be looking for on that uh, uh, Impala you're going to drive in a few minutes, okay? You can put that um, trigger down in the area where you know, you know, below below what it's a, what the reading is ever supposed to go, or above if you're going that way, and you won't have anything on your screen until that problem happens. And if that pattern goes to where that trigger is, you'll start getting a pattern, or you'll see a snapshot of what happened. See, so bang, it just takes a snapshot whenever the the reading on the scope goes into that range. That's what the trigger is good for. On your old oscilloscope that you used for ignition, you would actually have a uh, capacitive pickup. You hook around the coil wire, and you'd have an inductive pickup. You'd hook around the number one plug wire. The inductive pickup was the trigger. That's what located it, so you were always looking at the same cylinders in the same order. An oscilloscope display is called a what? And we're talking about the... This is what you're, you might have seen an oscilloscope display. kind of looks like this. You seen that? You seen that, right? Yeah. You seen it? You seen it? Red. Huh? Red. It's a graticle. Believe it or not, it looks like a grid, but it's they call it a graticule, a graticule. Now, when you got voltage over time, basically the time is here, and the voltage is here. And if you see the time is set at 0 
seconds or like 500 milliseconds or whatever. That means each one of these blocks is 500 milliseconds. If your voltage is set at two volts, that means each one of these blocks is two volts. So you're, and that's, that's basically the way that goes. You're not, when you put it on two volts, that doesn't mean the whole scale is two volts. It means each block is two volts. Uh, a signal showing the voltage of a battery displayed on a digital storage oscilloscope is being discussed. Uh, technician A says the display will show one horizontal line above the zero line. Technician B says the display will show a line sloping upward from zero to the battery voltage level. Uh, which technician is correct? And that's going to be A. If you've got battery voltage showing on a scale and you've got your zero level set right here and say this is, a, this is 10 volts, you'll see a line right there just slightly above the 10 volt line. And it's just going to be a straight line going across there. And um, I need to have a different color marker if I'm going to be doing this on it. Setting the time base to 50 milliseconds per division will allow the technician to review to view a waveform that is how long in duration? Okay. 500 milliseconds, because you got 10 of these little blocks across here. Got me? That's the deal on that. A throttle position sensor waveform is going to be observed. What should the volts per division setting to be the I mean, what should the volts per division setting be to see the entire waveform from zero to five volts? B. Gonna be B, one volt per division. And that would be like one, two, three, four, five right there. Um, two technicians are discussing DC coupling setting on a digital storage oscilloscope. Technician A says the position allows both the DC and AC signals of the waveform to be displayed. What was that door closing about? Adam. Yeah. Oh, that was Adam? All right. Uh, technician A says position allows both the DC and AC signals of the waveform to be displayed. Technician B says this setting allows just the DC part of the waveform to be displayed. So who's right about that? Both the DC and the AC can be displayed, right? Now if you put the, so you can actually, if you put the zero, and this is what I like to do, if you put the zero in the middle, you'll be able to see either DC or AC, whatever is being displayed on there. Because down here is your minus and up here is your plus, you see, so you can make, make that happen on that kind of, and you guys get to get really, really good with the scope, because I may give you some scope, uh, I may give you some scope exercises uh, as part of your midterm, midterm final or something. If you would like to have that. Um, and midterm's coming up pretty quick, by the way. Um, huh? Yeah. Should be there somewhere. Did you get one? No. What test is this? This is engine performance 2 test 6. Engine performance two test six. You find one? No. Here, try this one. All right. Okay. So, um, anybody that's using the oscilloscope will know these by default. I mean, anybody's used it a lot. Cycles per second are expressed in what? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Voltage signals, or waveforms, if you will, that do not go below zero are called what? DC. Well, they're called pulse trains, actually. Uh, basically, if you've got your... Uh, I mean, pulse train would be like your, you know, up and down. It's always above zero, but uh, whenever, like on an injector, you know what an injector looks like? You know, you can actually see on some, some of these... Uh, uh, machines that I've used in the past, you know, would actually show your injector pulse like that, which is really sort of screwy. Uh, when actually the real picture of your injector pulse, you have a 12 volts here. When it pulls it down and looks like that, you have a 50 volt spike and then it levels out to another 12 volt. This is how long the injector is open. That spike is actually, you got to set your screen pretty high to get that spike because this is going to be 12 volts, this is going to be zero volts. So you're, you're on the side of the injector where the uh, engine controller is controlling it and you're reading the voltage coming through the injector coil until it's pulled down to ground and then it goes up. So a lot of times you're going to be reading on that side of it. But you know, if you, that, that, yeah, that's, a, that's a pulse train. Although those words are probably not going to do you any good anyway. That's a textbook thing anyway. You know, we'll call it a pulse train. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, cycles per second are expressed in what? Slope. Did he cycle? Huh? 
Huh? <laughs> Cycles per second are expressed in what? I've got all this before. Hertz. Think about the rental car. Hertz rental car. Hertz. One cycle per second is one hertz. Oscilloscopes use what kind of uh, lead connector? C. That's going to be actually a B and C connector. Hmm. Yeah, the the D. You know those that you got to push in and turn and lock them. Yeah, it says lead connector though. That's yeah. What are banana plugs then? <laughs> banana plugs are the ones on the these little yellow meters. Oh. That's a banana plug. That's because whenever you pull a little thing out, look at it, it looks like a banana. You know, it's got looks like banana peel. Uh, a digital meter that can show waveforms is a what? What would you call about that? <laughs> a graphing multimeter. A graphing multimeter. Do you ever have, have a graphing multimeter for anything? Everyone? I don't know anyone who has one. Yeah. Uh, what type of oscilloscope displays all voltage without taking samples? A. An analog. In other words, it's just drawing you a picture of what the voltage look like. It's not going to be on a regular TV screen sort of a thing. Yeah, CRT. Uh, technician A says, uh, what does CRT stand for? Cathode ray tube. Cathode ray tube. I know I'd get an answer out of him. Technician A says, what analog scopes use an LCD display? Technician, excuse me, says analog scopes use an LCD display. Technician B says, digital scopes may use a CRT display. B. Uh, B is right about that. Uh, digital storage oscilloscope being set to display a waveform when a certain voltage is detected. This minimum voltage is called what? Threshold. The trigger, actually. You put the trigger down there, you know, you, that's what I was talking about a while ago. If you put that trigger down there where you're thinking it, the dropout's happening, and it, you won't see anything on that screen unless that voltage threshold is crossed, and then you'll start seeing a picture, which is really good for finding something that's going on down the road, you know. Uh, a typical digital storage uh, oscilloscope display screen is raised, in, I mean, is arranged into a what, what grid? Eight by 10. Uh, eight by ten, eight by ten grid. Give that man a cigar, uh, bubble gum cigar. Technician A says voltage is usually indicated on the horizontal display axis. Axis is that true? Huh? Yeah. Time is on the vertical axis. Uh, technician B says time is usually indicated on the horizontal display axis, and uh, that's going to be B. Um, in the blank, the time base setting reduce the number of samples per second. Now, what do you do if you want to reduce the number of samples per second? Uh, you're going to increase the time base. Uh, why would you want to do that? Like, for instance, whenever I was uh, using that little uh, polarity scope out there the other day on that crank sensor, and if you don't have it set right, like if you got it set to a very small time, the, the frame, what you're going to get on there is you're going to get something that looks like this that you can't tell nothing about. You know what I mean? And for if you on a crank sensor, you're going to want something that looks like this, and then has that missing tooth and keeps going. So that's basically whenever you zoom out. If you zoom in, is when you're going to the smaller time. If you zoom out, you're going to the bigger time, and you get a better picture of what you're seeing there. Now you do have to zoom to the right level to see what you're supposed to be seeing, because if you zoom too far out, it looks like gibberish. If you zoom too far in, it looks like a curvy line. And you got to you know be knowing how to set all that stuff up. After you use a scope a little bit, it's just nothing to it. Pretty simple. As a matter of fact, uh, there's an entire uh, Facebook page that I'm a member of that's nothing about digital storage oscilloscope, nothing but DSO diagnostics for cars. And these guys post, you know, pictures of stuff on there, you know. But it's a group that's, you know, you got to be in, you know, if you, you can ask to be a part of the group, uh, but uh, the administrator of the group may not let you in, but it's a cool group. Um, let me see. Uh, a time base of one millisecond of division will show a total time of what on the scope display? One millisecond. Ten milliseconds. Wow. One millisecond per division. you got ten divisions, right? Which of the following is the correct voltage division setting for a throttle position sensor? Once again. What do you think? I'm going to go with three. Let's go with one. We talked about that earlier. That was a previous question. Answered it. Wow. Because it's going to be one Volt per division, right? Which of the following is measured as a percentage? Ding, 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 ding. Huh? Anybody know? Duty cycle. Duty cycle. Absolutely correct. Good answer. Which of these terms is a measure of the actual on time measured in milliseconds? Pulse width. Not period. That's at the end of a sentence. Okay. All right. What was 10? 
What? You aren't listening? That's it. You're fired. Get out. All right. Let me see here. Oh, yeah. You were sort of a wall that time. Huh? It was 101 when I walked through that door. Oh, sorry about that. Um, an analog scope. Can an analog scope store the waveform for viewing later? Can he or can he not? An analog scope can't because you're seeing what's there unless you take a picture of it with your digital camera. Technician B says the trigger level has to be set on most scopes to be able to view a changing waveform. And that's true. Because you don't want the waveform walking. You want it to stay still. And what was six? Huh? What was six? Six. Um, number six was A. Uh, technician A says the position allows both DC... Uh, it's just the DC coupling setting. Technician A says the position allows the AC, DC and the AC signals of the waveform to be displayed. I usually like to go to DC and put zero up in the middle. That's what I was talking about. Uh, huh? Let's see. Uh, yeah. And five is D. Yeah. Is there a Z down there? Or what? It said B. Oh, is it, it's going to be Baker. B. Baker. And three. Yeah. My battery voltage is played. It's going to be a line above the zero line. You know, if you got a 12 volt, it's going to just be one as horizontal line as long as you're hooked up to it. If you bounce your lead, you're going to see some jiggles and stuff. Everybody happy with that? No. Everybody, uh, everybody in here has used the scope, right? Yep. Yeah. You use one, you use the scope? Uh, you have? What about you? I think so. You've used the scope? Adam, you use the scope? What's the scope? Ha ha, very funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right then. All right, we gotta scope that out. Got it?